Hello, Internet. I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. And this is Wine and Serious Business, episode 184. Uh, kind of exciting day for us. Yeah. We've got a new camera, so we're going to look extra. I'm going to look extra tired on Wednesdays. We're filming on a Wednesday, so I probably look really tired. But it's, it's uh, we went from a flip cam to now we're shooting with an Nikon D. SLR D5200. I sure yeah. hope there's a difference. I sure hope so. Yeah, and we got an external mic now finally too, which is big news. But even better than that, we've got some 2011 Oregon Pinot uh, that I'm really excited about. We just did a little mini pre-taste to make sure they're corked. And man, these 2011s are really starting to surprise me. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I really fell in love with 2010. 2010 was a surprise. And 2011s, as they've been in the bottle for a few months, man, they're just so supple and elegant and really wonderful people have a lot of great things to say about them right now but that's also the wines that people are trying to sell so so that's a it's kind of a common story right there's always a lot more positive talk when when they hit the market um, but uh, but but have heard you know in, in private conversations actually on the show you guys just watched over the past couple weeks there's a lot of just really enthusiastic comments about the 2011 vintage so yeah, everyone's pretty excited about it I mean after uh we had uh, 2009 and 2008 were pretty big years, and then we got that 10, which everyone was really scared of. But then after after a while, man, they just showed themselves to be so possibly my favorite Oregon vintage. Um, and 2011s are kind of just a step down from the 10s, and um, but in some cases, not so much. This one's really dark. Yeah, That's, and substantially different. I don't think in many cases that I would confuse one for the other. Probably not. Yeah, a little more structured in 10, would you say? Like a little, a little more. Just more Punch. like pepper and yeah, and like like pop to them. Um, yeah. All right, so let's let's talk about this wine that we got here. So this is the 2011 uh, Walter Scott Pinot Noir from the <laughs> gosh, Clos de Clos de Oiseau, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. You like that? Oi, okay. Oiseau. It's in it's in the text down below. So yeah. You, you can let us know what's really right strange or wrong. name. I said close, um, close. Yeah, and Walter Scott's <laughs> made by made made by a couple like long time Portland wine right, industry can, folks. I forgot we can we can be quieter. Yeah, we don't need to be quiet. Yeah, microphone's right there. Microphone's right there. Yeah. Um, a couple it. long time Portland uh, wine industry folks, uh, Erica and Ken, um, doing great work. They they recently moved out uh, to their winery this past year, so they're they're living down the old Amity. In uh, McMinnville? AVA, yeah, like, uh, not, not in McMinnville, they're out, like, on, they're, they're, like, out on Vineyard property. Oh, wow. Yeah, awesome. like, at the winery, making it happen, so it's really exciting to see, you know, the, the wines that are coming out from them, fun to talk to them about it. Um, always had really good success with their wines. Like, yeah. They've always been, real, performed really well every time. And I, I haven't had this vineyard until recently, but I was out at a tasting, it really caught my attention, I'm like, I gotta pick one of these up to put on the show. So, nice. here it is. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a fantastic Pinot Noir character all over the nose here. Earth and cranberries I'm getting mostly. A little bit of strawberry. Yeah, go with the, the like, a little bit of uh, dried cranberry thing, but there's, like, sort of a funky, like, the dark earth aroma going yeah. on there, too. Like, not so much the mushroomy thing that you can kind of get sometimes, but it's, like, uh, very, like, got a dark character to it that's just really... Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it smells wonderful. Fantastic yeah. nose. Yeah. Hmm. The cranberry flavors come in right away on the palate. Kind of evolve towards like kind of dusty raspberries later. Um, I was going to say raspberries too. The way the acidity is on the finish sort of lends to that. And dirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a little bit of like dark. Again with the, the dark flavors that don't sort of remind me of... Uh, I mean, they remind me of more earthy characteristics. Sometimes you can get into richness or umami. This doesn't really have that so much. It's mm -hmm. more of like the funky earth. Um, man, I wish I could put my finger on exactly what the flavor is, but... Hmm. So texturally, fantastic. Really, really light on the palate, but has a good intensity of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, with great finishing acidity and tannins that are just really, really or that are just delicate and sort of relaxed in the finish, but really, really late in the finish. So, um, really easy drinking, though. I'm getting, like, a sense of richness that comes in early, kind of sits uh, on the front end of the palate, and then the structure comes in and kind of cleans that out later. Like, it doesn't yeah. stick around as a big, rich wine. Um, mm -hmm. There's just kind of a... 
Almost like a sense of maturity to the to the fruit, the way the way the, way the fruit expresses itself, not as in like an okay. age character, but that sense of richness this early is kind of interesting to see. I think um, the tannic structure definitely shows a little bit of its youth, uh, where it's pretty full at the end and kind of rises above the fruit. Um, but I think it's in balance with the rest of uh, rest of the components, and the flavors are delicious. So it's something I look forward um, to seeing at age as well as drinking now. Right. So where you're pulling richness out of this, whereas I feel less about it. I do get some mm. of the the early richness to it, but the the freshness of the fruit and the sort of acidity with, compared with the raspberry flavors in the finish, uh, yeah, it, it it just lends to lends to more earthy characteristic to me than uh, than just overall richness, which I tend to get from I don't know, just yeah. Anyway, a lot of flavors delicious. Stick around late too. Delicious. Like, I'm really enjoying that, like a little floral and like really delicate flavors on the back end. It's true. The tans are very, very light yeah. overall, though. So, yeah, easy drinking. Think really, a little stronger. Yeah, yeah. Really good stuff. I, I like the. Uh, I like its intensity, and I like the way that it, it finishes. So, starts off with yeah. Eighty nine plus for me. I'll be looking forward. Man, even after six months, I, I I'd like to give it a try. Uh, but the flavors are really good right now. Yeah, I would go. I'll go ninety points on it. I I like the. Uh, I like all the the flavors and I like the way it smells I, I really like everything about it and I, I could stand for maybe just a touch more uh, firmness of the structure on the finish but uh, the acidity is really really nice Man, that's fun. It's yeah. fun to have two people right because that's totally different experiences right yeah that, that, that uh, yeah tannins are good good for him that is good for me so so there's right it's really walking the line a lot of good stuff to offer here right um, and I feel weird doing the show so quiet like, yeah, I know. I know. We're, we're, probably gonna get so, loud. we're probably going to get loud again. So, yeah, we can move the mic back or something. But anyway. it'll be good for our quiet guests. So many of our guests are really quiet, right? So, That's true. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Nice. So, on to wine number two. Um, we got here. Yeah. Talk about it. Some other excellent local producers, Brian and Claire at a Big Table Farm. Um, I know a lot of folks that watch this are, you know, fans of them, and it's been a while. I wanted to do them maybe three or four months ago. That's what she said. On a show, oh boy! On, on, a, on a show, and uh, and and I ended up doing a switcheroo with one of the people I was uh, I, I was out wine touring with. I got home with a different bottle. So oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so we so, so we've had to had to wait for a while. Um, but I was out there tasting recently again. Uh, got to try this, and I was like, man, this is on right now. Um, this so is the the Palo is? Sandberg Vineyard, the, the the single one of their single vineyard Pinot Noirs. Um, as always, they got these awesome hand drawn labels on the front. Yeah, um, got vineyard, vineyard shears on this one, um, but uh, but but yeah, they they do they always do a blend and then they they break out some of the uh, individual vineyards that they think are representing special character at the time for special bottlings and I think I think this one really really represents that. So nice. Wow, definitely richness on the nose here. Yeah, strawberries maybe even. It's gonna sound bad. I'm gonna say the strawberries are like baked a little bit, but don't think like in a really hot vintage when they're like stewed strawberries. No, I'm no, just just more like a little bit of pie crust, a little bit of nutmeg, in with in with the strawberry flavors. Totally like uh, like like uh, strawberries over like an angel food cake or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like or, fresh. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah, definitely yeah. not like. With just a little bit of syrup. We're not talking, it's not goopy smelling or yeah. right, overall sweetness, but just adds like a little bit of uh, depth to the, to the fresh flavors and uh, getting a little touch of the potpourri dish out of it too, which I, I really like that flavor, right? Like you get a little bit of, just a touch of dried floral, a little bit of sweetness, and uh, yeah, it's nice. It smells yeah, wonderful. Good depth to the nose. Mm -hmm. mm. Good texture right on contact. You get like a burst of fruit right away, and really like soft and smooth tannins, um, more so than I even typically associate with with uh, Yo Amity Hills. This is like getting into like the the smooth texture of uh, Dundee Hills fruit that I that I'm mm. I'm often fond of. Um, I really like the texture on this. And texturally, Big Table Farms is. Turned out some. I mean, uh, generally their wines have a really nice texture, at least that I found. And then sometimes it comes off. Uh, yeah, they're just a, they're just nice and round in the on the palate generally. And this is another example of that. Um, there's a great uh, great contrast between uh, light and bright flavors and darker flavors on this. Um, similar to this one, I'm getting like 
some darker, richer fruit flavors. I'm, I'm going to lean towards the, the, the ripe strawberries again, kind of sitting on the middle of the palate. Um, but I'm getting like really bright raspberries. Um, even some like hibiscus flavor around the sides with the acidity. And they both are happening at the same time, which, which is totally interesting. Like makes for great contrast, I think. It really does. And good integration between all of the, the structure, the flavors, and, uh, and, and the, the length or the linearity of the finish on this is really quite nice. Um, compare that with, or consider that with the structure or with the, God, I can't talk today. I'm tired guys. I'm sorry. Um, consider texturally the wine is so fantastic is, is fantastic combined with the integration of all the flavors it makes for a wonderful wine it's really good yeah the, the integration at this point is even surprising for, yes. for for a younger wine um yeah everything is really together right now um it's just really smooth all the way across the palate good complexity too. i would completely agree i'm trying to pick i'm trying to Gauge the flavors. Do you get like a, an apple-y thing on the finish? Yeah, like, I can totally see that. Yeah, like sort of um, not not so much honey crisp because honey crisp is more tart. And it's not that. Yeah, it's not like a green apple, right? It's, no, it's no, like just a nice crisp, maybe a Braeburn. Like a, jo a Braeburn or Jonah Gold. Yeah, 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 somewhere in there. Um, the way that it finishes, yeah, it leaves a little bit like a, this like fresh flavor in the mouth. It reminds me of that sort of just good, really clean acidity that doesn't take mm -hmm. it too far. But uh, but you know, just a little bit of drying sensation on the back end comes together really nicely um it does <laughs> it's a really yeah. good wine yeah this this is 90 plus for me right now um and while you know while they put a lot of care into it right a lot of single vineyard stuff like it's definitely ageable um this is also just drinking drinking, drinking great fantastic. in the moment like I, I don't think you're doing it any disservice by uh by popping one of these if you got it i completely agree and i, I would put 91 plus 92 points on it i, I just think the the integration and the, and the, the flavors and it just it's it's wonderful. It's really good, but yeah, yeah. So as of right now, yeah, this is drinking fantastic. Yeah. So so right, couple, couple really solid Oregon Pinot Noirs from mm -hmm. people who know what they're doing, and uh, this is this is the kind of stuff we really like to share on the show. It really is. When we when we pre tasted, the first thing out of my mouth was like, "This is going to be a good show." Yeah. Just just I love I love drinking these wines. They're yeah. Yep. That's what I love about Oregon Pinot. It's smaller production stuff too, so I have been really good about uh, about keeping links on the on the blog page. Like mm -hmm. you can click on the names, go to the wineries, send them an email, see what's available. Um, you know, see what state they ship to if you don't live in Oregon. But uh, but but totally worth checking out. Yep. Question of the day: uh, the easiest thing ever today. We've got new hardware. Can you tell? Yeah. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Like really, any comments to the effect? Of, uh, you know, on the quality of the video or the audio. Today we'd love to hear it. That yeah, any critique you have for it because this is what we need to adjust and make make to where it's normal from now here on out. The flip yeah. we've had for so long that we just got used to it. Or Dan got used to he'd come over here and set it up in five seconds and and we have the same thing every time generally. So yeah, help us out. We we yeah. appreciate any comments we can get on this. Again, we got a new system. Take some photos. Chaz has to make sure he sanitizes the SD card before he sends it home with me. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh yeah. I delete all the. Um. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you We're guys gonna next enjoy time. the rest of these. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>